In uh, this video, I will give a brief introduction to using Cloud Compare for doing measurements on leader data and for extracting um, layers for using in um, QGIS. So we'll be extracting a digital terrain model from our point data set. So um, what you need to do is that you need to go to uh, cloudcompare.org. Um, this is a website and um, there are some tutorials. Um, what you really need to go download and skip beta version and let's go down to the latest table and you can download it for Mac or you can download it for Windows for, or, or Windows for Oculus Rift support. So VR support. Um, once you download the software, what you get is um, this. So this is basically just um, the user interface. This is our mapping window. I should say I have changed mine. Uh, I think it's by default some blue radiated color. I've gone into the colors and said color and then ticked off gradient and set the background to blue. And I've set everything apart from uh, light to um, white, um, double sided. So that's the only modifications I've done to the setup here. So um, once we uh, have it loaded, we can find a file. We can use both LAZ files or LAS files. So these are the compressed versions. This is an uncompressed version. No difference in the way it functions. Um, I just use the last file in this case because I want to use a different one than the one I started with last time. So I have the RGB values. I've got all the things that they say apply all. It will come out and say, um, I don't know so much about geographic coordinate systems. Um, it will transform it. Uh, the only thing we have to note here is that the scaling factor is one. So one me because we are using a UTM with meters as units as input. So one unit in um in cloud compare is one meter. That's the only information we really need to make sure. And we'll just say okay to all. And it will load these in this case 7.2 million points. Once this is done, we will probably get a bit of a disappointment here because doesn't look as nice as the one over the campus where we had color on it because this one is only scanned of uh, without uh, RGB values. We can um, change the display because it has defaulted. So I click on the layer, it's just like in QGIS. A layer has to be active if you want to do anything to it. And I can then change it to a scalar field. And here it has changed it down here. We can see that the scalar field is our point source. So we, this is our flight information. So these are the lines. So we can see that there are three flight lines in this data one in the center, and then two that is overlapping in each side. Um, if you want to see something of what's on the image, we can change this one to its intensity. And again, there we get a wee bit disappointed to start with because it has scaled it from one to 65,000, whatever. Um, we don't have data in this range. In this data set, we only have data around 250, I think. Um, it's a bit of trial error to find out where the data is. It depends on the scanner and so on. But this is approximately right for this area. So if you can see, if I zoom in, you can see um, people know what Copenhagen know this is the lakes. Superb Young, Oak Boulevard, Forum. Um, and we can, if I zoom further in, what you see is that the dots get a bit more difficult to see. They get a bit smaller. If dots get too scarce, you can increase the size up here in the corner by plus it. So here we can now, we can easily see what we have in our image here. Um, so um, this image is a classified image, so I can also change it to the classification. Again, less strange colors. Um, it does show a histogram and we can see here that we have some values, um, but the colors are a bit out. I have uh, created a color scheme. Color schemes are one of the scalar field, this color. 
and um, from the website you can download it um, my classified here so from the course website it's one uh, so um, and that is basically just taken um, and divided the scale this is a 100% in intervals of 20% of 5% each so I have 20 which is um, the number of classes you can see here um, and um, and I can then say apply, close, and I can now choose my classified color scheme. So here we have water and blue, round in this grayish color, brownish color, low vegetation, high vegetation, buildings in red. Um, one of the things we can use. Um, This tool to is do measurements. So if I want to know how tall this tree is, um, I can go up and choose, make sure that one is selected again, make sure, choose this pointing tool, and say I want to do a measurement between two points. So I can click my first point somewhere down here. It will come with the one to do this, yes. And I can see this is probably the top of the tree and you can see this tree is a uh, what 14.3 meters um and if i rotate that it's reasonable um so we can do measurements of um, trees buildings um, of height we can't that's one of those things that is difficult to do directly on maps um so the other thing we can do is that we can extract um specific elements of our classification so uh, I'll just close this measurement tool go back to this one in this case if I wanted to make a um, a map that just contained the buildings I could of course just extract the terrain model so it would be extracting land and water um, but that again is a standard product so um, what I want to do is I want to extract just the buildings you can remember that buildings in this uh, classification system um, there um, th this is the international classification system from the American Society of Photogrammetry and Remote Sensing and we see their classification for buildings is six so if I go in and fill out everything that is building six or classification I make sure that my active layer down here it's important because you can only filter on the active layer so make sure classification is the active layer and we can go up in this filter tool by value and say so i want to have anything from uh, 5.9 to 6.1 and i want to split the data set so what it does is it creates two data sets um my cloud extract and that outside so ones that were in my filter they are in here um the coloring scheme doesn't really work now so i'll just change this to my intensity and now you can see all the buildings um as relatively well defined objects um so if i wanted to ex for this as a raster layer, you can see this icon which you can recognize from QGIS as an icon for raster layer. If I press this, it will ask me, okay, my step size, that is my grid size, how large are my cells? If I want to make them half meters high. Here I can see, I can define which area I want. I just first update this so it knows what it's doing. Um, so this is my data set um, first of all importantly I don't want to do any interpolation between so I see I want to leave uh, my outside my buildings so have you got only the buildings so I got no data outside my buildings and if I click the grid I can move around and zoom exactly what I want don't want to do this now I can just go down and choose export my raster and 
I want to export the heights. I don't want to export colors. Just want to export the heights. And I can call it uh, buildings. I think I've done that already as a test. So this place that file. And uh, now I have exported a raster layer for QGIS that contains what is defined as buildings in um, this um, um, leader file with the heights. So basically, yeah, I can just um, load the data set in uh, QGIS. So we'll just see that. So if um, I now switch over to my QGIS, um, which uh, in uh, QGIS, I'll just start a new project and go to my, where I save my data, uh, somewhere down here. And I'll just uh, buildings uh, there, I load it in. And um, what we now can see is that we have our data set that we created in um, Cloud Compare, and we um, have buildings, so no data, and elevation in these buildings. We also have some small holes that we all have to fix somehow, but never mind that. Um, it's because um, of the way that it has done no interpolation in um, Cloud Compare. So, basically, um, Cloud Compare is a relatively simple tool that we can use to do measurements on our data data set. We can visualize them um, and we can export them as rasters to use in um, our software like QGIS. So, I um, hope you found this video useful. See you.